What's good, family? What's good? It's your boy, Urban Sports Guru. I want to give you my picks for week two. Sorry, I've had a whole lot going on. That's why I wasn't able to give you my picks for week one. I will reward you with these picks for week two. NFL season is crazy. Already, it is crazy because so many teams didn't practice. You know what I'm saying? Guys aren't playing. Guys aren't playing on the preseason. You're only relying on joint practices. And for these last few years, you've seen it. Not just in week one. Some teams you've seen it in week two. Some teams you've seen, you have know, seen get smashed in week one and come back. Like Tennessee got smashed last year, week one. Guess what? They were the number one seed. Packers got smashed week one. Guess what? They ended up being the number one seed. So last year, last week is not the end-all, be-all. It is not. It is not the end-all, be-all. I also always say by week four, you get an idea, a real idea of what these teams really are going to be. By week four. However, this is week two. Let me give you my picks. It starts tonight when you have the Chargers versus the Chiefs. Now, last year, the Chiefs had a good stretch when they, Patrick Mahomes was going through some growing pains. And defensively, they were just they were just doing their thing as far as stopping people from scoring. Not so much yardage, but from scoring, they was doing their thing. They played a good game against the Arizona team that looked like they just got a lot of issues going on right now. Offensively, I expect the Arizona to be good. Yes, it's only week one. Chiefs defense played well against them. Now you're playing against a real offense, though. A real offense that is clicking. You can't really run the football very well. The offensive lines look, look decent. You can't really run the football well. So right now, I want to see where the Chiefs defense really is so far as far as this year's version. And Chargers, they came out like game best, especially on the defensive end. You got playmakers all over the field. Yes, they're not going to have um, the best receiver. Not going to have their best receiver. And um, J.C. Jackson's a game-time decision. You know, if I'm leaning towards the Chargers because it's week two, if it was week 14, I'm going with the Chiefs. But the fact that it's on a short week in Arrowhead, Chiefs give them four, take the Chiefs. Then you have the Jets playing against the Browns in Cleveland. Cleveland's giving six and a half. Cleveland's giving six and a half. I'm going to take Cleveland for the Super Bowl. I just don't think the Jets can score enough points. And particularly now on the road and the offensive line issues that they have right now. And you're going against a team with Clowney and um, Clowney and the other pass rusher, one of the best in the league. I really think they're going to have issues protecting Joe Flacco. He is a stationary target, as is. I think Cleveland has that's money in the bank. Which, what I think is going to be a very good game is Washington. Washington versus Detroit. Detroit lost without a valiant effort last week. I think this is going to be a theme. I think it's going to be a theme. What you see out of saw the Detroit Lions last week, I think it's going to be a theme. You're going to see out of them out of, the same thing out of them to um, this Sunday. Win, lose, or draw. Detroit's at home. They give them one and a half. I don't think they're going to lose back-to-back home games. And this home game is very winnable. I like Detroit giving one and a half. Then we got Tampa on the road against New Orleans. Tom and T- Tom got a lot of stuff going on in his life right now. I'm not going to sit here and speculate what it is. We all think we know, but I'm not going to speculate. Um, but New Orleans... Dennis, they give them fits for the simple fact the way Dennis Allen constructs his game plans. <sighs> constructs his game plans against Tom Brady. Sean Payton is going, guess what? Dennis Allen's still there. Can't guard Mike. He started, he started percolating in the second half. I like New Orleans. Tampa's the favorite. I like New Orleans. Now we got the Carolina Panthers versus my boys, my New York football Giants, who played a great game, particularly in the second half. The offensive line came together. Um, the issues that I have in this game, Giants are rotating some rookies in into the guard positions. In the first half, those guards was getting whooped. Yes, she was playing against all pro and Simmons, but those guards was getting whooped. And you're going to get some good young defensive linemen in, in, in um, Carolina, particularly at the tackle position, the kid from Auburn. You know they're going to have to be stout defensively in the run game because you know the way 
Um, they're going to want to run the game with um, Christian McCaffrey and those other running backs to make it easy on Baker Mayfield. Um, I want to see how the Giants defense stands up against a team that actually has targets. Tennessee doesn't really have targets like that. They don't really a team that to have a lot of weapons. Guess what? Carolina does. Carolina does. They do have offensive line issues. I want to see if the Giants can get pressure on the quarterback. Hopefully, there's our... Um, the other pass rusher that we have, and um, I don't want to mess up his name, and uh, Thibodeau, hopefully they'll be playing, get pressure on the quarterback, I'm rolling with my boys, at home, home opener, I'm taking my Giants. Then we got New England against Pittsburgh. New England, they seem to be in a bit of disarray, particularly on the offensive end. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh has so much so many weapons, even though some guys are going to be hurt. I think they still have so much more weapons in New England. And New England is just going to have a hard time struggling to score points, even with um, Pittsburgh not having T.J. Watt, who's one of the best in the game. Um, I look for Pittsburgh to win a close game, like a 17-13 game. That's what I look to see. Now we have Indy versus Jacksonville. We have Indy versus Jacksonville. Now, Indy played Houston to a tie, even though they had their running back ran for like a buck sixty. Uh, then Jacksonville is home. A lot of people expected some better things out of Jacksonville, but the team that everyone, I think the team is going to win this division is going to be Indianapolis. This is not going to be a good division. Like 10 and 7 will win this division, or 9 and 8 will win this division. Just my humble opinion, this division is not good. I'm rolling with Indy, giving four on the road. Then we got Miami and Baltimore. This is going to be a good-ass football game. A damn good football game. Miami and Baltimore. We have um, Miami and Baltimore in Baltimore. Now, Baltimore had a get-right game against the Jets, able to get their stuff right, playing a bad team on the road. Now you play it at home. I think Lamar Jackson is going to show out. I think he's going to show out. Um... I want to see Tua against a good front. Baltimore's already having injury, already having injuries in the secondary. I want to see Tua in that Miami O line against a good front. They wasn't really challenged last week against against the Patriots because they was able to get out in front, get out in front, play with a lead. Let's see when the game is like back and forth, when the game is like even. You play against a good front. Let's see what Tua is able to do. I think it'll be a great game. I think it'll be a good game. I remember what Miami did to Baltimore last year, the way they blitzed them. Blitz, 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 and kept on blitzing, and Lamar Jackson wasn't able to deal with it. I'm curious if they're going to no, know Brian Forrest is there, but I'm curious if they're going to be able to do that again. But the way Baltimore's able to run the football, even though J.K. Dobbins is probably is not going to be playing, I'm going to take Baltimore in the close game. It's Baltimore three and a half. They may win by five. Um, then we have ATL against the Rams. The Rams get this get right game. We have what, like eight, nine days extra. To, we have a couple few extra days to prepare because they played last Thursday. In the offensive line, they did not look good. Thankfully, playing against um, Atlanta that um, doesn't really have a good front to expose their all line. And the Rams are going to have to do something to develop a running game. They're going to have to develop a running game. They can't rely too much on okay, we can get down and just rely on staff to throw us out of to throw us back in. You can't that cannot be a strategy. And when I looked at this offense, this offense was always able to run the football and they needed Stafford to take them to the next level. This is what that offense was predicated on. They need to get back to that. Because they can't be playing every single game getting physically dominated up front. They need to get back to that. I think they get back to that in week two. Rams with the win. Now we got Seattle coming on the road to play San Fran. Um, I think San Fran re-signing Triple G cost them that young quarterback that they had. Because him being there is putting on Trey Lance. He's putting so much undue, unreasonable amount of pressure on him. Because he hasn't played much, and he's on a team that is so win now, 
a team that with the right quarterback can win the Super Bowl, a team maybe with Triple G, uh, with on um, Triple G, Jimmy G can actually win the Super Bowl. Like, possibly, seriously. Uh, he's gotten them very close. He's gotten them to the Super Bowl one throw away. He's gotten them one game away from the Super Bowl. He's done this, and the NFC is not as good as it has been in past years. It just isn't. Um, I told you, I think Kyle Shanahan says, you know what, I'm coaching in spite of him anyway. You know what, I might as well coach in spite of him with the young kid. That's what I think, and I think Seattle's going to ride this high and keep this game close, but I expect... I expect the 49ers to win, but eight and a half spread, I don't expect them to cover that. Cincinnati gets to play against <laughs> Dallas. Gets to play against Dallas. I do expect Cincinnati offensive line issues, maybe not so much in this game, but as the season goes on, their offensive line, they'll gain the continuity. You know what I'm saying? The training camps, guys aren't playing as much together. So you get all these new pieces, they gotta play together. You gotta get that synergy. And I think they're going to get the synergy better. Why? But it may sound like a broken record. Running the football. You run the football. They develop that synergy. You just saw that in the Giants game. They were getting whooped up front, especially uh, that three, the three-headed monster, the two guards in the center. The tackles played well. Andrew Thomas, salute to him. Um, but once they started committing to Saquon, they started dominating up front. I think this is what's going to see out of Cincinnati because – they got to run. They got to run it back too. They got to run it back too. Yes, you got Joe Burrow. But make it easy on him. Don't make him have to do everything and shoot out all the time. Make it easy on him. I like Cincinnati. And you got Houston and Denver. Oh my God. I think Hackett is going to learn from mistakes. Even though I do think Denver's going to have their growing pain, more growing pains. I think Denver's going to win, but they're not going to cover. Houston was very impressive in a tie because I just don't think this is a good football team. And Houston will keep it close, but still lose. Now we got two teams who are in flux. And culture is a big issue with, in the, with each team, with Arizona and the Raiders. Now Derek Carr has done so much to overcome the culture issues in Vegas. And that's why I'm going to give him this victory. That is why. Uh, Chandler Jones gets to play against his old team as well. Kyler Murray, I hope you get some, uh, in the words of Marcus Spears, you will need new security. Then you have Chicago on the road against Green Bay. Now, like I said, Green Bay got spanked last year, first game, ended up being a number one seed. No Devontae this year. Um, I think that the defense will p play better. Green Bay defensively will play better. Um, Chicago defensively looked good. It was a sloppy game. No offense was going to look well. No offense was going to look well. But but being in that situation, they made the most of it. I think if you take away that one throw that Justin Fields made across the field, I think the Bears lose that game. That, that three, that play... And they're going for a touchdown, change the complete complexity of the game. So, with that being said, I like Green Bay in this game to win a close game. I think the spread is what, 10? I don't see them covering that. 24 24 17, something like that. Nothing great. Green Bay with the W. And we got Tennessee at Buffalo. Buffalo is the most impressive team I've seen. They just look loaded at on every single level, off offensively and every single level defensively. They just look loaded. They look like they're primed. They look like they want it. They look like they want all the smoke on everybody, and they're going to take the smoke and stuff it down your throat. They look that damn good. That damn good. Um, that's just what I see. They look that good. Um, Tennessee. Now, Tennessee normally whoops on them because they're able to just bully them up front and pound the run with Derrick Henry. They're going to try to rely on that. The Giants was able to stand up. I expect Buffalo to be able to stand up in Buffalo because the last couple of times Buffalo have been coming to Tennessee, they've been getting whooped. I expect Buffalo now in Buffalo to stand up, and they're going to get this win, and I've seen them cover it. They're that damn good. Minnesota and Philly. This is going to be a good game. And this is a game that's going to give me a measure and stick of how good each of these teams are. 
Philly scored 38 points, where a lot of times offenses are not really looking that well, at least not to me. Jalen Hurts, he still has that question mark, but, but because of the way they're able to run the football, because of that, they're going to be able to put up points. I want to see how Minnesota Minnesota plays the run. I want to see they played it well, I mean, obviously against Green Bay, but this is a different kind of running game. It's like it's almost like, like Baltimore. It's very different because what the quarterback is able to do. Um, Sedaria Smith wrecked a lot of havoc. Let's see what he brings this game. Um, but the Eagles defense has to do something better. They have to do something a lot better because they also got walked up and down the field, and they also lost a man in injury on the on their front line. And Minnesota's offense is a lot better. Offensively, they're a lot better than uh, Detroit. So uh, they're a lot better than Detroit. I, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm taking Minnesota on the road. I'm taking Kirk Cousins in Minnesota. Kirk Cousins in prime time is normally a no-no, but I'm going to take him this time. Those are my picks. It's your boy, Urban Sports Guru. I'm out. Salute.